hey how's it going and today I thought it'd be fun to do a video on how to make rain this video kind of takes off where this one leaves off this was a great tutorial done by Anthony Hall on rain splash and ripple and where he leaves it is you're looking at this and it looks pretty good except the rain doesn't quite look like rain suggestion is to tweak it so I started playing around with trying to make rain in light wave and I don't want to tell you how many times I had to Kind of mess around with it so right now i think i'm in the ballpark with it and so i just thought i would share with you my what i've learned so far about trying to make rain if all goes well you should end up with something that looks so is this the one let's see something like that maybe even a little bit better like those drops seem a little bit too big so i'll tweak them on the way out but i wanted to talk a couple things i in doing this video i realized a couple things about rain is rain number one it doesn't really have a color it's transparent and number two you don't really see rain it, it's moving so fast it's really just a blur so nobody technically sees it it just kind of flies by you real fast and it's more blurry than it is anything it's not really a color so that can actually be to our advantage and a lot of times you don't even know that it's raining until you look at the ground and see the splashes in the water so rain is it's fast it's blurry it's not really a color although it may take on the color of the lighting or the environment and that's the case with any kind of water that's problematic and uh, I'll show you what I mean about that in a minute because it affects your lighting because you have two lights in light wave. You've got a distant light and an environment light and you want to use an environment light for your rain because you want it to match, should match the color, of the quote unquote color of the rain should match the, the background. But it's more of a blur than anything else. If you, if you look at it, it's, it just goes by so fast. So that could actually be to our advantage. Now here's the the one I was working on. This uses the same images that Tony Hall's tutorial uses. And one tip or trick is make sure you press D and make sure you're in the right color space. So you just go to quick preset and sRGB and that'll put you in the right place. If your image should look like this and this looks like it's some sort of park somewhere. This is the image that we'll be using and uh, you can just download any HDRI image but this is the same one that Tony Hall used in his video. And so you don't really have to do that much. You just have to, there's a couple little things that I'll, that I'll show you. So, but I, I will start from scratch to walk you through the whole thing. So we'll go clear scene and then we're going to start by making our emitter. So we'll go to FX tools. We'll go to emitter and we'll go okay we can just leave it called emitter and then we can set this to i don't know this could be a thousand here the generator size we want to make it kind of big so we'll go a hundred oops so just type in a hundred there we can leave the y the same if it's a hundred we want it kind of big and then the particle limit we want a lot of particles so just a couple zeros there and we can leave everything else the same this is the same the motion this is where it will get interesting we're going to put 250 there on the Y and we might want to adjust this later. You'll see what I mean. And we could add a little vibration in there like 0.2 and then for a set around we might want to increase the position blur to 200. That just adds some variability so the particles aren't all leaving at the same. And I think that's all we need to do. Minimize that and now what we'll do is we'll just pull out here. Now you'll notice if you hit play of course our particles are shooting up. So what we're gonna do for that, make sure you're on the zero frame. Let's go ahead and raise this up a little bit, like about like that, and then go to rotation and you can either uh, pitch or bank it. It doesn't really matter, I'm pitching it. So you can just type in, it's easier just to type it in 180 there. And so if we hit play, we have our rain. So rain comes down pretty fast. I mean, have you, have you ever seen slow <laughs> rain? And doing this tutorial is actually interesting of all the things about rain. Like in movies, they fake the rain, right? They have uh, shower heads and hoses and to make the rain bigger because you can't actually see much of the rain if it's actual rain. So in almost every movie, they totally fake the rain. And it's kind of the same thing in 3D actually. So we're kind of faking it. Well, we are faking it. So now we can come up here and click that little box there and we'll match our uh, perspective to the camera view and if it's shift to camera view that's what we should be seeing there okay and um, I think we're good wait see that happens every time let me go back to perspective here uh, where did I make a keyframe here is it the camera yep I do this all the time okay so let's go back to perspective view see where we are emitter and then now let's match it make sure i'm on the zero frame though okay now match it i do that so many times okay now if i go to camera view there and i hit play that's what we got okay fantastic 
So I'm not actually going to be covering the whole scene. Okay, so we've got our particle effects done, and the speed is important because the faster you can make the particles go, the more blur that you'll naturally create, and then that'll make it look even more realistic. So that's a, one of the tips is you want to be able to make the rain go fast so that you can actually increase the blur. Okay, and then what we can do now is we're going to add in a background. For that, we're going to go to the backdrop, and we'll go add environment, uh, textured environment. We're going to double click here, go texture, and this is uh, so spherical, and it's the same image that uh, Honey Hall used. So, sorry, this sunset cabin thing. I don't think it matters. It's on the Y or anything like that. And so if we go into VPR you should see it. Now notice we're, we're off view here. So what we can do rather than shifting the camera, I, I learned you don't want to mess with the camera. You can just go to offset here and just get a little bit better viewpoint, right? Like that. Okay. So you don't have to mess with the camera to correct the image a little bit. Okay. So now we got our particle emitter. We've got our background and now we're going to get into, well, there's lighting. So let me, let me do it this way. Let's go into backdrop again. There's one other thing we need to go into render because we're going to be using hypervoxel. So we got to go into render. So render properties, volume metrics, use legacy volume metrics. Otherwise you won't see anything. Okay. And then we go back into a backdrop again, backdrop again, and we'll go to legacy volume metrics, hypervoxels. And we'll just do this and click on emitter and go activate. This is a helpful step because you can kind of see what's happening here. Okay, so now we got our, we got almost everything there. So there's our crazy particles that don't look anything like green just yet, but this is a good point to talk about the lighting now. Okay, so if we go click on lights and we go, we have two lights in the scene. So if I turn on VPR for a second, we've got a, uh, well, they're way, way over there. I don't want to scoot in on them, but we've got an environment light and a distant light. So those are the two lights that we've got in the scene right now. You can also see them in the scene editor. If you go into the scene editor, we've got a distant light, which is acts like the sun and an environment light that uses an image to light the scene. So, and that's a more realistic, a much more realistic type of light. So we'll go into VPR again. And so here we are. So I'll show you what, where I'm going with this. The, the problem with the rain and the problem with the water is because they are transparent, they'll, they take on the characteristics, the lighting characteristics of the environment. So the water, quote unquote, should be the color of generally the environment and the light hitting it. So that's why I say water technically doesn't have a color. It's transparent, right? So the lighting affects your, how the rain's going to look. So that's why lighting is so important, especially with the uh, rain. So if we look at the distant light, it's white. So if I make this, let's say red and go, okay, see what it does. And I mean, it could be, that's good. If you're like making a movie about a re, uh, revenge of the, the, um, red pills <laughs> for this, we don't really need this distant light. I don't think it's going to help us with our rain. So we can just, by clicking these off, we can actually just turn the distant light off as if it's not even there. So now it's not even really seems like it's just being lit by global illumination. But here, if we go to the environment light and uh, if we turn off global see. It does that, right? Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add the environment light. And so we'll right click here and this is in Tony Hall's tutorial too. I'm just copying what he's doing. He did a spherical. There's our image right there. Put on the Y and now these particles are being lit by the environment light this this lighting from this right so that's that but because the surface of these are just bland right now it doesn't really look like much you know it doesn't look like anything really so it's not really doing much because of the surface itself so that's our uh, where we have a kind of ace in the hole with light wave because if we go into our emitter no it's um if we go into our we got to go into backdrop and we go to our legacy volumetrics and hypervoxels. If you click F8, it'll bring up these presets. And if we go to generic, we can just go with glass because glass is very similar to water. And you'll see right away by doing that, that now we have something that's looking a lot more like water, but it doesn't look anything like green yet, right? 
So like I said, you don't really see, you're not going to really see these rain particles. They're going to be zooming by so fast. So the main thing, one of the first things we can do to get this looking rainish is just to make it smaller. So if you go 0.15, that might be way too small right there, right? But that's certainly closer to what rain looks like. And of course, not all the rain is the same size, so we could add some variation in there. But what's really going to do this, what's really going to turn this into rain is this stretch direction. Adding this to velocity, and that's way too much. And you don't need that much because the particles are moving fast as it is. So something like maybe a little bit more than that. Well, you don't need more, maybe more than that. Let's see. Let's put in 5%. So this is where you just have to kind of play around with it to see what you like. But mostly you'll be experimenting with the the speed. And if you hit render, you, you can render these out and see how you like it. The one other thing is under shading is you probably want to turn the specularity down and just have the diffuseness. The other thing I noticed in doing this is that if you come to hyper texture, you could throw in turbulence in there because if you were to zoom in really, really close, you could you realize that rain isn't that clear. And so you could add just some turbulence in there just to add some obfuscation to it so that it's not this crystal clear raindrop. So at this point, I would say you're pretty much there, except that maybe the size is too big still. So maybe 0.1, let's see. You're just going to have to adjust it to a point where you'll see uh, if you like it or not. And I'll render this out to see if I like it myself. I'll show you at the end what I kind of ended up with. And of course you can spread these particles out and rain them, but this is certainly a lot more realistic as far as rain. And once you add the motion to it, the natural motion blur you'll get from the speed of the particles falling, it all starts coming together and you'll see. So you don't really have to tweak too much here. It's really just the size the stretch and the speed and those three factors are what's going to give you the realistic looking rain along with the spread of it and then of course you know if you added in the splash and the puddles and all that that's all i had for today i hope you found this helpful take care and uh, if you have any suggestions or ideas for making rain yourself please feel free to share them take care have a great day and i'll talk to you next time